Anyone that knows me knows that I love the Penguin. First of all, he's my favorite Batman villain, but this TV show is fantastic. And I want to break down why I believe the Penguin is a complete masterpiece of television. This is all thanks to the collaboration between Lauren LeFranc and Matt Reeves. They've taken Gotham City's gritty underbelly and thrown a spotlight on a character who's often overlooked, Oz Cobb. Don't say Cobblepot, a.k.a. The Penguin. But this isn't your typical villain arc. What we get here is an incredibly nuanced character study. One minute you're feeling sorry for Oz, and the next you're reminded that he's ruthless, twisted, and navigating Gotham's decaying, chaotic streets with nothing but a grim determination to rise to power. There's a great moment between Sophia Falcone and Oz Cobb where she where you know she knows that he threw him into Arkham and she says, was it worth it? And he gives the answer, yes. Very blunt, yes. His eyes are watering and he's explaining that, you know, because of his limp, his walk, his look, his appearance, who he is, where he came from, that all the things that he was given, the iceberg lounge and the drops, you know, that would be, that's remarkable for a guy like him. So her undoing was his doing and he's benefited greatly from that. And so for him, it was worth it. Although he does ultimately apologize to, to Sophia. The show goes beyond being just another superhero TV entry. It's a raw emotional journey that draws you into the grime of Gotham. From the alleys of Crown Point to the crumbling estates of Gotham's elite, the production spares no expense in immersing you in this world. The setting isn't just a backdrop. It's a living, breathing part of the story, reflecting the struggle between the city's rich and the forgotten. And the way it balances itself as a continuation of a movie, of a theatrical movie, The Batman, but blends itself in naturally. You always feel like it's a, it's part of the same story, a continuation, but also very separate. You also feel like all the information you need to enjoy the show is self-contained in the show. You don't need to go beyond to get the knowledge you need to understand and appreciate what's happening in front of you weekly on TV. One of the standout dynamics of the show is the relationship between Oz and Sophia Falcone, played by Christine Milotti. Sophia, daughter of Gotham's former crime lord Carmine Falcone, is as much of a power player as Oz, and their relationship is loaded with tension. It's a battle for control, with Sophia vying for the power vacuum left after her father's death, and Oz determined to prove he's the one to fill it. Their dynamic is fascinating because it's never just about business. There's a personal edge, a rivalry born from shared ambition, but also mutual resentment. Sophia knows the game as well as Oz, and their interactions reveal just how dangerous both characters truly are. You're left wondering who's going to outplay the other, and that tension is palpable. Let's talk about Colin Farrell. The guy absolutely vanishes when he puts on the prosthetics to play Oz. But it's not just the makeup and prosthetics that are impressive. It's the performance. As I just mentioned, the tears in his eyes, the ambition in his facial expressions. Farrell nails every nuance from the vulnerable moments when someone mocks him to the quiet, simmering rage just under the surface. He brings a level of depth to the Penguin that's rarely seen. This is a man who refuses to show weakness even when the world is against him. One of the great moments of Oz is when he sticks up for his protege, his driver, Victor. The boy with the stutter. When a waiter finishes Victor's sentence for him, Oz erupts. It's not out of kindness. It's because Oz knows exactly what it feels to be dismissed, to be seen as less. The show is filled with these small, intimate moments that make you question Oz's motivation. Does he genuinely care for Victor, or is he using him to feel less alone? It's these complexities that keep you hooked. And at the end of that episode, he does to Victor what the waiter does to him, showing the duality of Oz Cobb. In an earlier episode, when there is a handicapped seat available, Oz refuses to take the seat. He doesn't want to cave into his vulnerability to his disability. Oz needs to be strong. What makes the Penguin so compelling is how it forces you to root for Oz despite knowing he's the villain. He's had to fight for everything in a world rigged against him, and you can't help but understand his need to claw his way to the top. But as the series has been unfolding, it's becoming more and more clear that Oz exploits the very people he claims to represent. And that leads us to Gotham City itself, one of the greater characters of this universe. Matt Reeves' version of Gotham City is gritty, grimy, and full of tension between the upper class and the forgotten masses. And with the longer format of a miniseries, we get to see characters evolve in ways that aren't possible in a two-hour film. It's raw, it's emotional, and it's a side of Gotham we've always wanted to see on screen. 
The Penguin is a dark, gritty, and utterly captivating entry into the Batman universe. It's character-driven drama that fans have been waiting for. Every week is a hit, hit by hit. It's a slow burn, as I've always said, but it's introducing more lore, Batman lore, and it's lore that they've kind of reconfigured to fit their narrative, and it just works. They know how to do it. They've created and they've built a world that you are infatuated with, and they're making all these little tidbits from Batman lore in the comics, these small little details, and they're bringing them in, they're fleshing them out, and they're making them grounded and down-to-earth and fit in their environment. It is a great show. Let me know if you guys like the show. Are you enjoying The Penguin? You're looking forward to more? Do you find it to be a masterpiece so far? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, maybe the master of your own universe.